A pump overhaul begins the same way that any other type of mechanical maintenance work begins, with careful preparation. A good first step is to check the pump manufacturer's instruction manual to make sure that you're familiar with the pump specifications and any special instructions pertaining to the overhaul. Also, check your company's procedures. It's important to follow those procedures exactly without making any unauthorized changes or taking any shortcuts. In addition, you should follow all applicable safety precautions that are associated with the work. For example, make sure that you have the appropriate protective gear. If you know ahead of time what replacement parts you're going to need, order them far enough in advance to have them available when the overhaul begins. Part numbers and other information can be found in the manufacturer's instruction manual. If the pump is large, you may also need rigging equipment, such as a chain hoist or a come-along. And you'll need a pair of V-blocks to support each of the pump's rotors while the rotor is being inspected after the pump is disassembled. After you have selected the specific tools that you're going to use, inspect each tool carefully. Make sure that each tool is in good condition before you use it. In addition, you may also need to prepare the work area for the pump overhaul. The work area should be cleared of all debris and other objects that might interfere with the overhaul or present a safety hazard. If the pump is relatively small, it might be easier to move it to a more suitable location, such as a shop, before you start to work on it. Before any action is taken to remove or disassemble a pump, the pump must be locked out and tagged in accordance with your company's procedures. Lockout and tagout procedures are designed to ensure that equipment cannot operate while it is being worked on. When all of the preparations we've talked about have been made, the necessary steps can be taken to move the pump if required and disassemble it. Take some time now to answer a question on preparing for a pump overhaul. In this part, we'll watch a mechanic perform initial disassembly steps on a two-screw rotary pump. Keep in mind that the specific steps and the order in which they're done may be different for other pumps. We'll focus on the general steps rather than on the specific details of the pump used as an example. We'll divide the initial disassembly procedure into three general steps. Disconnecting the pump from its motor and bed plate, removing the timing gears, and removing the outboard bearing bracket. Disconnecting the pump from its motor involves disassembling the coupling that joins the pump shaft to the motor shaft. The next step is to unbolt the motor from the bed plate and swing it out of the way. If there are shims under the motor's feet, their location should be noted. Shims are important to the proper alignment of the pump and motor, and they must be put back in place correctly when the components are reconnected. If the pump is being moved, it must be disconnected from its piping and unbolted from the bed plate. Because pump fixtures such as gauges could be damaged while work is being performed on the pump, they are usually removed as part of this step. The pump in this example has been moved to a work area and the mechanic is ready to start disassembling it. To complete the initial disassembly, he will remove the timing gears and the outboard bearing bracket. The mechanic removes the drain plug from the timing gear housing to let the oil drain out. While the oil is draining, the mechanic makes witness marks on the timing gear housing and the outboard bearing bracket. After the oil has finished draining, the mechanic reinstalls the oil drain plug. Then the mechanic loosens each of the bolts that attach the timing gear housing to the outboard bearing bracket. As each bolt is removed, he sets it aside in the parts pan. After all of the bolts have been removed, the mechanic will remove the timing gear housing. The mechanic begins by using a hammer to tap out the alignment dowel pins on both sides of the housing. Next, he removes the housing plate set screws and the housing plates themselves. Then, he loosens and removes the retaining nut on one shaft and then the lock washer. 
He'll also remove the retaining nut and lock washer on the other shaft. When the mechanic removes the timing gear housing, he is careful to pull the housing back slowly and evenly to keep from damaging the shafts and the timing gears. He places the timing gear housing in a cleaning tray. It will be cleaned later on. After the housing is off, he removes the timing gear housing gasket. Now the timing gears can be removed. First, the mechanic removes the spacer on each shaft. After he makes a witness mark across the two gears so that the gears can be reinstalled properly, he uses a gear puller to move the driver gear along the shaft until it can move easily. Then he uses the gear puller to move the driven gear until it is alongside the driver gear. The timing gears are removed the rest of the way by hand and put in the parts pan. Both keys are removed from the shafts and placed in the parts pan with the gears. After that, the mechanic removes two washers from one of the shafts. The gear teeth should also be checked for any signs of spalling, which is flaking of the teeth. Damage to the timing gears affects the operation of the pump and it can cause damage to other pump components. For this reason, timing gears that are excessively worn or damaged should be replaced. The final step of the initial disassembly is removing the outboard bearing bracket. The mechanic loosens the bearing bracket nuts with a wrench. After the nuts have been loosened, he can remove them by hand and set them in the parts pan. The mechanic then makes witness marks on the bearing bracket and the pump casing so that these parts can be put back together properly. Now he can separate the bracket and its gasket from the casing and pull it back off of the shafts. He'll remove the bracket gently and evenly, being careful not to bump the flange bolts, the shafts, and the mechanical seals. When the bearing bracket is removed, the mechanic places it in a cleaning pan. This completes the initial disassembly. Now try a question to see if you understand what we've covered in this part. In this part, we'll watch a mechanic complete the disassembly of a two-screw rotary pump. We'll focus on the general steps involved in the disassembly rather than on the specific details of the pump used as an example. What we're calling the final disassembly starts with the pump disconnected from its motor and bed plate and with the timing gears and the outboard bearing bracket removed. We'll see the mechanic remove the outboard mechanical seals, the inboard end bell, the two shafts or rotors, and the inboard mechanical seals. On the pump used as an example, the removal of the outboard bearing bracket exposes the outboard mechanical seals. As each mechanical seal is removed, it must be handled very carefully to avoid damaging the carbon sealing face. This surface is highly susceptible to damage from moisture and dirt and to etching caused by acids in human skin. So the mechanic must avoid touching the carbon sealing face directly with his hands. The mechanic measures the distance from each mechanical seal to the end of its shaft. He will need these measurements to ensure that the mechanical seal is positioned correctly when he reassembles the pump. If a mechanical seal isn't positioned correctly, the seal may not operate properly. After he takes the measurements and writes them down, the mechanic marks each seal so he'll know which shaft the seal should be put back on. Then he loosens the set screws on each mechanical seal and slides each seal off of its shaft. When each mechanical seal clears the tip of its shaft, the mechanic slips the seal into a clean cloth and sets it aside in a safe place. The mechanic can now remove the inboard end bell. This is done to expose the bearings in the inboard bearing bracket for inspection. The end bell contains a reservoir of oil that's used to lubricate the bearings so he'll have to drain the oil first. To do this, he sets a pan directly under the end bell and then removes the drain plug. While the oil is draining, 
the mechanic can place witness marks on the end bell and the bearing bracket, as well as loosen and remove the end bell's nuts and bolts. After the oil reservoir has drained completely and the drain plug has been reinstalled, the mechanic separates the end bell from the inboard bearing bracket and pulls it carefully off of the shafts. He then places the end bell in a cleaning pan so that it can be cleaned before it is reinstalled. He also removes the end bell's gasket. The last components to be removed in this example are the inboard mechanical seals. As with the outboard mechanical seals, each seal is marked as to its location and its position on the shaft is determined by measuring. After marking and measuring the inboard mechanical seals, the mechanic carefully removes each seal and wraps it in a clean cloth to protect it and keep it clean. In some cases, a pump's inboard mechanical seals are removed before the pump's rotors are removed from the casing. Regardless of whether the seals are removed before or after the rotors, however, the procedure for removing the seals is the same. With the rotors and the inboard mechanical seals removed, the mechanic has finished disassembling the pump for this example. Now try a question to see if you understand the disassembly steps that we've covered. The next components to be removed in this example are the rotors. As this is done, the mechanic must be extremely careful not to bump the rotors against the casing or the flange bolts. He must also avoid banging the rotors together or dropping them on the floor or any other hard surface. To protect the rotors, the mechanic follows three basic guidelines. First, he pulls the rotors out of the casing together. Second, he holds the rotors firmly together as they slide out of the casing to keep them from shifting. And third, he makes sure that the rotors are adequately supported until he sets them down. In this topic, we looked at some basic preparations for a pump overhaul. And we watched a mechanic perform initial disassembly and final disassembly steps on a two-screw rotary pump. Take some time now to try a few practice questions.